Welcome sure. to another episode of Sports and Songs Podcast. We are the hosts, Dan and Andy. Hello, Andy. Hello, sir. How are you? Good. Today's July 18th, 2021. We're in season two, episode number 34. And we've got lots of sports to talk about. Lots of music, concerts, sporting events, sports in general. Yes. Summertime baseball, town ball winding down. Yep. And the American League, National League all-star game where would you like to start well i'm going to start well first of all if we start with anything else the trivia question sir trivia question now for those listeners out there the trivia question is all-star game related uh played the all-star game on Tuesday. the mvp was vlad guerrero jr first time ever a blue jay has been the mvp first time ever a blue jay so one team had a period of three MVPs of the All-Star Game in a seven-year span. Ooh. Seven-year span, there were three All-Star Game MVPs from the same team. Name the team and name the players. That's the question Ooh. for this All-Star theme. Uh, but that's all I've got for trivia for the day. All right. Think about that. Use your Google machine. Use the Internet. The internet. Yes, we will do this here. All right. Ta-da. There we are. That's us. Start some Major League Baseball stuff here. We'll just start the standings right off the bat there. Uh, this was as of Sunday morning today. So if any of these games we've played now or as we're talking, this was as of Sunday morning, the standings. Uh, there's the Red Sox in first by game and a half over Tampa. Toronto, seven and a half out. Uh, Central, White Sox, kind of running away with it now. You never know. Um, the rest of the division just kind of thanks for playing. And the West, Seattle creeping up there slowly. That number keeps getting smaller and smaller. Um, so let's see what happens there if the, the M's can keep going. I'm kind of exciting to watch that sort of stuff go. Nationally, the Mets are down to a two and a half game lead. Um, things not going well for the Metropolitans. Get into that a little bit later. Uh, Phillies, Atlanta, and Washington. Atlanta, three out. Remember that coming up later here, too. On the Central, the Reds keep creeping up there. Um, they've picked up two more games in the last 10 there, so let's see what happens. Don't count out the Reds, even though they've their names have come up with uh, trading some players as sellers lately. But I think the Reds might hold on, and I wouldn't be surprised if they pick up somebody to try to see what they can do here. And in the West, of course, those three just kind of switching spots every now and then, but that's uh, your three, the Giants, the Dodgers, and the Padres. Here's the wild card standings as of right now for American League. It's Tampa Bay and Oakland are your two wild card teams. And Seattle, three and a half out. Uh, Toronto, Cleveland, Yankees, and the Angels of Anaheim. National League wild card is the West Coast teams. Reds five out. Everybody else is over a half dozen out. Still early enough. I only kind of went down to less than 10 games out to show on the list here. But uh, we'll see how that goes. Some minor league standings real quick. We're getting other stuff here. There's the Syracuse Mets, 19 games out of first place. But eight and two in the last 10. Gained three games in the last out of the last 10. So things have been worse. And then the AAA Midwest, there's the Saints at eight and a half. Um, those of you on the social media so I was at the Saints game Thursday. I will follow up on that later on here too. Saints up to a 500 record on the year. We'll talk about those Metropolitans here. Injury reports, bad news last 24 hours. Both DeGrom and Lindor have hit the 10-day DL. DeGrom, right forearm tightness. And Lindor with a right oblique strain that happened in yesterday's game. Um, I think it was kind of smart to keep DeGrom out if he's been fighting this forearm issue for the year. If you recall, it's been a couple times earlier this year he – Left games early, uh, didn't miss a start. So uh, well, hopefully it's just something we can get through. Lindor, 
yeah, you can laugh. He's batting 218, this and that, but he's been the only consistent player all year, consistently in the lineup all year. Um, I don't care how well you're batting, just to have the same person out there position wise help has been helpful, but now that he's on the 10 day DL. Only up by two and a half games. So, boy, oh boy, it's getting getting tight. Uh, here's the Mets schedule for the next two weeks. They got the Pirates today. Then they go to Cincinnati against the Reds, who are hot right now. Then they're home for some home cooking there for a few days. They got the Jays. Five in a row with the Braves because of a doubleheader there. So, I said land with that three game lead, two and a half, uh, five games coming up next week. Lots of nail biting here. With our Mets fans, look at the schedule coming up. Uh, the local club, the Twins. Okay, here I saw this on their injury reports. Uh, Jake Cave uh, played through a fractured tailbone or fractured one of his vertebrae. Uh, painful running the bases in Chicago. I saw him playing Thursday night when I went to the Saints game. He's looking good. But here's me. Your vertebrae, your stuff like that, and look at the Twins record. Trying not to be Debbie down here, but you know what, Jake? Take the year off and get better. Don't fight through this and make it worse for this year. If you want to DH every now and then or pinch hit, fine. But let's just get out of the field. Let's not go crashing in the walls and making things worse. Maybe just take the rest of the year off and get healthy. My two cents. Stop. Not saying you're folding in the season for the whole Twins, but Cave is a good future of your team. Let's not mess that up. And here's the twin schedule for the next two weeks. Got a, they just did lose to the Tigers before we started recording. Um, then they got four in a row with the White Sox. Then the Angels for four. And then the Tigers again. Now, the Andy, I got a question. Yep. You know, the twins come out of this all-star break, uh, hoping yep. to, uh, to move up in the standings, you know, up into that third place spot, uh, maybe yep. even second and they have a favorable schedule to start off right off the bat against the Tigers. Who's a and they go 0 for 3. Team. And they yep. get swept. Yep. Swept this weekend. And now you, you know, you go on the road with the White Sox. And then uh, the Angels and the Tigers, and you got the Cardinals after that. Boy, it's going to be a, a tough goal, I think, the rest of the way with this. Yeah. That's, not That's why I'm going to just sit cave, especially if you don't do well against the White Sox. Just – Call it a year for him. Let him get healthy and come back healthy next year. He's too good a player to chance, take a chance on like that. Yeah, four against the Sox. This will be interesting at at uh, in uh, South Side of Chicago. Coming. Yes. If you look at the times, it's a four ten start. Then the second game right after that. So it's uh, a true doubleheader, seven innings each, but a true you know not those day night doubleheaders where you empty the stadium and come back in. It's a true doubleheader. Trade rumors for baseball. Here's some names I've seen come up. Uh, Chris Bryant of the Cubs. Uh, his name's come up a lot to the Mets. Bryant, third baseman, outfielder. The way the Mets injuries are going right now, I think the Mets have to they have to go all in right now this year. If you're going to do it, do it. Make Pull the trigger and do it. Um, Joey Gallo of the, the Rangers. His name's come up to the Padres a lot. I look at the Padres lineup with – Tatis Jr. and um, Machado and stuff like that. Then you add Gallo to it. That would be a very tough team. If the Padres could add him, that would be awesome. Nelson Cruz, he's stuck as just a DH, so it kind of limits him to the American League, but Oakland is a name where he's – or a place he's been going to. And Max Scherzer's name is coming up. Um, Houston is a destination for him that, that's been talked about. And the one other name on there I got listed is um, uh, um, like Cole Hamels. I don't like his first name there. Cole Hamels. He pitched like three innings last year. Had some issues. He's out. He's been coming back. He's having tryouts this week to come back. He's 37 years old. One team that's talked about getting Cole Hamels is the Mets. Left-handed pitcher, veteran, fifth starter long relief. That they have no lefties for the Mets. They need something. And that's why I've kind of thrown Madison Baumgartner's name out there for the Mets, too. They need to get a left-handed arm soon, or it's going to be a real, real long fall for the for the Metropolitans. Toronto Blue Jays next month can start playing home games in Toronto. 
for the first time in two years. They've been playing in Buffalo in their AAA park lately. Uh, so good news there. Um, I have an uh, interjection uh, for that. Uh, yeah. Trades, Andy. Yes. I almost forgot. I wanted to insert just a, just about a two-minute opinion here. The Twins are really going after the sign Byron Buxton, the center fielder. Uh, he's hitting for power this year. He's hitting for average. He's doing everything. He's not been healthy. He never really has been healthy. And his contract is due at the end of the season. So instead of negotiating it then, they're moving it up and they're really making a stake to say, uh, not, not a mistake, I, I didn't say, but a, a stake in the ground to say, we want this guy, uh, we're going to go as high as $70 million to keep him around long term. Now, I think this is twofold. Number one, the Twins may or may not really want him. But now that they put the foot in the ground by saying we're going to keep him and we're going to pay big bucks to do so, now you get all these teams coming in saying they're now interested in him. And so the Mariners are interested, the Phillies, the Yankees have been for some time. But I think with, with Thad and Derek, uh, is it Thad Levine, is the general manager are, are pushing up that price and the twin season's already lost. I, th I think you may see a deal come uh, and they're just jacking up what they can get in return from him by placing that big $70 million deal that they want to sign. Uh, for God's sakes, Byron Buxton's name was trending on Twitter. So this was just you know, kind of a re-signing, uh, not even really big news, but it was leading on trending on Twitter this weekend about this. And now these other teams that are kind of sleepers out there, the Seattle Mariners, Philadelphia Phillies saying, you know, we may want a piece of that action because the twins have so much, uh, so much at stake that they want to keep them so bad. My, my personal gut feeling says is that these guys are pushing up the interest and the dollar amounts, knowing they're not probably interested in keeping him, but now they can get a whole load of players in return for a guy like him and, uh, and get out from underneath that, uh, the salary for the next how many years. So that's my two cents. I think well, yeah. they're playing the market and not showing their hand is what's going on. He was leading for starting outfielders in the All-Star game, too. And as injury kind of came up and his votes went down. but His so stock is so high right now that I think they picked now to, to, to say we want to work a long-term deal to keep him. And all that's done is, is generate interest from other teams that are, that are like, wow, maybe we want him now. Um, so that's just my two, my two cents. Maybe they end up keeping him anyway, but the Twins do have a lot of depth in outfield. Uh, with a lot of future young prospect guys. so Yeah, they become sellers, so they get rid of Nelson Cruz and stuff like that. You might you – know, because really the Twins, is this just a bad year? Do you try to keep everybody together and make a run next year? Or do you dump and reload for next year? Or dump a little bit. There's been Jose yeah. Barrios in the mix. Yeah, Barrios' uh, name to the Mets comes up a lot, or other teams too, yeah. As, as well. So very interesting. Now, Nelson Cruz is done after this year. He, he signed a two-year deal. This is his second year. Yeah, he will not be coming back, no matter how good the team is or not. I don't think so. Yeah. And Buxton, like I said, they're going to be up to uh, having to pay him big, shell out some big bucks to keep him. So this might be a way to generate some interest uh, to get something in return for next season. Who knows? Yeah, that's all yep. I got. Well, no, no, that's fine. I uh, like I say, Blue Jays going uh starting next month to return to Toronto after playing in Buffalo the last year and a half. Their Triple A club, their home field. So. That should be nice, good for the Blue Jays, and also that could be the uh, bump they might need too. That could be the trade they need is home cooking, home fans, and that might be a boost they need. Rob Manford has said that Las Vegas is leading because Oakland A's have never, really never been able to draw there. No matter that state is just a toilet, and Vegas is spending money for teams. Baseball wants to do that, so I'd see the A's in Vegas very soon. As soon as I can get that done, I think. Rob Manford also said this week, this is the last year of the seven inning double headers. Also, I don't, I also think he also said they're talking about uh, getting rid of starting with the runner on second base in the 10th inning, too. I've heard mixed results on that one. Um, seven inning double headers, I think the reason they're getting rid of that, twice this year they've had no hitters who one of those seven inning games, but they can't count as a no hitter. So I think to prevent all that issue, they're getting rid of it. They did it because of COVID. That's what they're saying they did it for. They also did it to get fans back too. So I have no problem with 
every year, every team has at least one Sunday doubleheader somewhere or a Saturday doubleheader. The traditional, you buy one ticket, you get two games doubleheader. That's what's going to get fans back, stuff like that. Um, my league draft was this week for baseball. Zach Robbie of the Gophers was drafted. His father was also drafted by the Twins at one time. In fact, his father this week is being inducted into the Gopher Hall of Fame. So uh, big weekend at their household. But he was uh, drafted by the Brewers. So congratulations, young man. And also Alec Willis was drafted in the seventh round by the Cardinals. A pitcher going to the Cardinals. That's a good thing. That's a good organization to come up through. And there's Max Meyer, former Gopher, was in the Futures game uh, playing for the National League. So that's a good sign when uh, it's your first full year back and you're in the Futures game. That's always a good sign. And there's the numbers of the All-Star game. Uh, the NBA All-Star game had 5.94 million viewers and baseball's at 8.9, even though baseball had the worst uniforms of any sport for any event ever. They still got almost 9 million viewers. Did Otani have a lot to do with that? Fine. Great. Whatever we got to do to get viewers of the game, to get them to watch, we'll take it. Speaking of the Home Run Derby, Pete Alonso won for the second year in a row. His two wins in the Home Run Derby, he's made $2 million. His salary for those three years, he's made $1.47. Pretty sure Pete's getting a raise on his next contract. Uh, one other thing that was kind of neat at the Home Run Derby, if you noticed, everybody wore 44 for Hank Aaron. I thought that was pretty cool. That nice little Hank Aaron tribute for the game. That was cool. Too bad the game could be in Atlanta where it was supposed to be where he played. And there's the pitching chart for Pete Alonzo's uh, Home Run Derby. Uh, the pitcher coach, that, if I could get 50 pitches there, I could probably hit a couple out too. There's the uh, meme of the week. Mr. Ken Griffey Jr. there when someone says, Otani has the prettiest left-handed swing I've ever seen. <laughs> By his look from, from Jr. <clears throat> Who, I'm sorry, has the prettiest left-handed swing ever. Time for the soapbox. This is a required drink of water here. <clears throat> I'm about to go off on someone who goes off on someone. This jerk right here. Stephen A. Smith. I've always kind of respected Stephen A because he's not afraid to say what he says. And he's kind of puts his foot in his mouth a lot, but he's he'll call you out. Um, but he's also like one reporter for referred to him as a George Jefferson. He's the most racist as they come. He was very disappointed in the NBA finals because they had to go to Milwaukee. He doesn't want didn't want to go to Milwaukee. Sorry, is there maybe there's too many white people in Milwaukee for you, Mr. Smith? What he said on a quote on his show, first take on ESPN. Um, on Monday's ESPN, took it the first take to claim that the Japanese-born superstar was literally the closest thing to Babe Ruth that America has seen. Could be the face of the league because he doesn't speak English. Really? And his actions is what's making him the face of the league. Not because what he pops off to in commercials or on political shows, or anything else. Um, he doesn't speak English, so that's a bad thing. Okay, maybe this was wrong for me to say, Mr. Stephen A. Smith, but half the players in the NBA, I can't understand what they're saying when they talk, or in the NFL, I don't understand what they're saying when they talk. So, appreciate a player for what he's doing for his game by his athletic ability, not by his political opinion, his, his fast food choice reference, his preference, his shoe preference, his soda pop preference. You should be the face of a team or of a league because of your athletic ability. I could care less if Tony speaks English or not. Watching him play is a thing of beauty. But that's what makes him the face of the game because as I'm sitting in the stands up in the third deck, 50 rows back because I can't afford the big seats, I can't hear what he's saying anyway. I want to see what he can do. That's what makes you the face of a game, not for what you can do and then here's what it is you you went on to say i don't think it helps to be the number one face this is a dude that needs an interpreter so you can understand what the hell he's saying in this country really like i said before i can't understand half the nfl and nba so there 
And the NHL is doing just fine. And they got how many European players there that don't speak English and they're all doing just fine. So just because you don't like baseball, don't rip on it too bad. Okay. But uh, you're a jerk. Khalid Alameen, former Minneapolis North star, uh, UConn star, uh, played for Chicago Bulls for a while, had some success in Europe basketball-wise. He's not a new head coach at St. Thomas Academy. So congratulations, Coach Alameen. Kind of exciting there. Local boy does good. Uh, that picture and story is courtesy of KSTP.com. You can go to their site and get more info on that. Well, some NASCAR stuff going on today. Uh, today's race right now is under a rain delay, and they had an accident six flaps in, so everybody's all kind of whiny over there. So NASCAR fans, check that out afterwards, or if you haven't seen it before this. Here's the standings right now. Again, the first 16 make it. You win, you're in. Then after that's points. Uh, there's the cut line right there after Austin Dillon. So Bouchard's 96 points out. That's – a lot with just a few with a few races to go. So uh, these guys basically have to win to get in. I just hope the other guys that are in ninth and tenth place there, or I'm sorry, 14th, 15th, 16th place there, do, do really bad. So you drop. Um, the race today says the Firewood, or I'm sorry, Foxwoods Resort Casino 301. And here's the remaining schedule. We got Watkins Glen August 8th. Uh, they have four races. Obviously, they got the Verizon 200 at the Brickyard. Um, they're in Michigan, the Firekeepers Casino 400, and the Coke Zero Sugar 400 at Daytona. And then you're in the playoffs, the round of 16 in September. Darlington, Richmond, and Bristol, three very awesome tracks there. Then the round of 12, September 26th in Vegas, then Talladega and Charlotte. Round of eight, October 17th at the Texas Motor Speedway. Hollywood Casino 400 in Kansas on August or October 24th. On uh, Halloween, the Xfinity 500 in Martinsville, which leads to the championships November 7th. Now, that takes us four, five, six weeks in the NFL season right there. So if you're not a football fan, you still got NASCAR to eliminate half of the football season if you got to get into that. Music wise, the band Cinderella, mentioned them a few times down here. Uh, Tom Kiefer, former lead singer of Cinderella. We're a popular band with us 80s rock people. Um, this is both Tom Kiefer and uh, the three members of Cinderella. I'll put this on their social medias. That uh, Late last night, we were still trying to process the sad news of losing Jeff Labar. Jeff Labar, the guitarist of Cinderella, passed away earlier this week. They got word that their longtime keyboard player, Gary Corbett, lost his battle with cancer. Gary was a talented musician and a good-hearted friend. He toured with Cinderella on and off for many years. Um, Gary also worked with Kiss on their Hot in the Shade album and some other albums he was with them on. Um, and he'd worked with not necessarily metal artists. He'd worked with like Debbie Gibson, um, other artists like that in the pop genre too. So he was all around keyboard player, uh, lots of bands, a lot of people to see his social media stuff. Lots of different genres of music expressing the loss over Gary and Jeff Labar. A lot of the rock guys are just like, don't know what happened. I know Jeff years ago, I quit drinking. Um, I've been following him on Facebook for a while. His son's in a band, Mach 22. Jeff played with them a few times. He he's taken up cooking at home. He goes by Chef Labar sometimes on his, on his Instagram. He seems to be really getting his life together. Um, he admits he's the reason Cinderella kind of broke up because of his drinking. So he, he's taking credit for that. He's or blame either way you want to look at it. Um, so sad news for those, for that band, you lose two guys in two days. Um, that's horrible news right there. So condolences to those people there. Some good music news coming up here. We got the Oak Ridge boys, August 6th at Medina. Um, there is going to be no opening act. It's just the Oak Ridge boys. You can go to their website or Medina for tickets. August 6th. Guns N' Roses XL Energy Center, September 21st. At the Armory, September 23rd, Judas Priest with their new album in the 50 Years of Metal. Gore, December 9th, 1st Avenue. Don't, don't need to say anything else after that. If you don't know who Gore is, you are missing out. They are... 
There's something, something to watch. Um, that's why after that stuff, I do have one other thing to bring up on athlete that's also pro wrestling this last week. Lost Paul, Paul Orndorff, Mr. Wonderful. Um, he was also, he was very popular. I'll just talk about his WWF career here a little bit. He's very popular with Roddy Piper as a tag team. They went against Hulk Hogan and Mr. T in the first WrestleMania. He was part of the first Survivor Series. He was inducted into the Hall of Fame, WWE Hall of Fame in 2005, I think it was. Battles between good guy, bad guy. Um, no one ever had a bad word about him. He did what he was supposed to do. Uh, the story with him is um, the WrestleMania match with Mr. T. Piper was supposed to take the loss. Piper wasn't going to do the do the job, as they say in the business. So Orndorff did it. He, he didn't care. You know, now that he, he did what he, he did what he had to to get a check. The boss writes the check. The boss says do this. He did it. Orndorff, the reason I liked him growing up, Orndorff wasn't the tallest man in the world. So someone like me who wasn't the tallest kid in the world, kind of like, hey, little guy's doing good. You know, you got to have that little hero type of issue. And also, like I said, when he, when he was a bad guy, yeah, yeah, booed him, but you weren't really sure. You just booed him because he was wrestling the good guy. You didn't boo him because he did terrible things. You know, so um, he was, he's been lost. Um, lots of, lots of athletes lately and musicians this last couple of weeks going. So bad news, good news going around. Um, NBA finals, Bucks are up 3-2. As they say in Milwaukee, fear the deer is their tagline. Um, I guess Kareem Abdul-Jabbar showing up in Milwaukee to help with fan stuff. Some famous young rappers have shown up that I don't know who they are. So when they've read the names, I don't know if I've seen the guy or not. So I won't get into that. That's just me being old. Um, I kind of like to see Phoenix win it because I've never had one. Chris Paul's got the long career finally there. I like to see him win one. But then again, Milwaukee's kind of close by. Small small market team. You know, kind of. So either way, I'm going to be happy. You know, either I get my small market victory team from Milwaukee or Chris Paul in a team that's number one, 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 one. So I'm happy either way there. And then a couple weeks ago, in case we missed it, Tampa Bay, of course, getting a Stanley Cup. Um, what scares me now is if the Bucks do win it. Because Tampa Bay was, you know, Champa Bay, they called it for a while. So the Buccaneers, they got the Lightning won it. Um, the, the Rays made the World Series last year. The Bucks could win the NBA title. The Brewers are doing good right now. The Packers are the Packers. Title Tom going to Milwaukee or going to Wisconsin? Just saying. You want to be the bearer of bad news on that and ruin everybody's day there, that thought. But uh, lots of championships could be in Wisconsin in the next year. Just saying. Just saying. And as I look outside and it's nice and hot outside, I did see on the Gopher Women's Hockey Instagram page today, 75 days to the first game. Mm. Hockey's right around the corner. Wow. 75 shopping days to get that gopher season ticket package, first game package, get your sweater, hockey sweaters. Um, Olympics in the next week here starting up. A lot of those are going to be with no fans. I thought watching baseball in empty arenas was kind of weird. Um, I was talking to my niece who was in town this weekend. Stuff like swimming is going to be weird in empty arenas. Yeah. That springboard because the one in, you know, except the athletes. So, um, I've heard some athletes are dropping at the last minute now. Not going to report on who's who because I heard well, I heard Kevin Love wasn't going to play, but then yesterday I saw him playing in one of the warm up games. So, we'll see what happens during the opening ceremonies before I say anything official on that. I know Gabriel Stevenson of the Gophers, wrestler, rumor he might not go now, but we'll see. I don't know if he's not going because of injury or because of COVID issues. I would think if you're not going because of COVID issues, you, you should have said something before you were announced for the team. So if you're not going because of that now, you've been under a rock. It's not new. <laughs> you know, we yeah. if, if it was a borderline issue for you, you should never try it out for the team. But um, I don't know how they're doing it with announcers this year. Because I look for the Twins games here locally. 
And the Twins were in Detroit, but Justin Morneau and Dick Brammer were at Target Field calling the game, watching it on TV. They've done that all year. They don't travel. So are our Olympic broadcasters going to be sitting in New York watching on TV, or are they sending them to Tokyo? I don't know. So that would be kind of interesting, too, you know, how that works. But that should be kind of fun. Um, with no fans there, I haven't heard anything else. So if they're going to have the big opening ceremony, closing ceremony festivities. I mean, if there's no fans, you just start playing games and go. How do you do it? One, is it a gymnast or a swimmer or something like that? 15 years old, made it. Sorry, fam, we can't go. You're here by your, you gotta go by yourself. Uh, one gal for WNBA. She had to have something special done because now here's an athlete for you. Playing Olympic caliber basketball, but she wanted to have her baby come with because she's still breastfeeding. That's an athlete right there. That's <laughs> that's that's an athlete right there. That's someone to respect. That's a that's a hero right there to look up to, you know. But uh so how that's work, I don't know. There's just so many things going on with the Olympics on that. I'm really surprised they're still having them, to tell you the truth. Um, again, it's kind of a – these people have trained for so long. Maybe last year was your peak to do it. Now you've had to add another year to it. Maybe you're not at your peak anymore and someone else is going to catch you. Because this guy is going to catch you who would have been in between the Olympic years and who knows. But with no fans, it's going to be interesting. That's what I got, sir. What do you got for a trivia answer? Trivia answer. Go back to the All Star game. Uh, just played yeah. Tuesday, five to two. Uh, winning team for the uh, American League. But there was the question was what team had three MVP representatives in the All Star game over a seven year span? And this was uh, additional hint. It was in the 80s. On the 80s. Okay, so the Reds were the big red machine in the 70s. The Yankees were pretty dominant in the 80s. Well, not really. They didn't do their in the 90s, really. What team had a lot of studs in the 80s that would have done it? Mets are too hit and miss. I don't know. The answer is the National League East team, Montreal Expos. Ah. Montreal Expos had three MVPs in the All-Star game in a seven-year span. Started in 1981. Gary Carter, 84, Gary Carter again. In 87, Tim Raines. That's right. Tim Raines Sr. Now they got a call. Yes, senior now. So they, uh, yeah, the Expos had three American League or uh, National League All-Star MVPs in a seven-year span in the 80s. Uh, very rare. Uh, we know that the Blue Jays got their first ever Ameri uh, MVP award here from Vlad Guerrero. And there are still six teams left that have never had an MVP ever. Well, going back to Stephen A. Smith, just to put a little salt on your wound, Stephen A. In the All-Star game this year, the winning pitcher was from Japan. The guy with the save was from Australia. And the MVP was from the Dominican Republic. There. Wow, there you go. That's very interesting. <laughs> now, winding down the season for sports is the two – the two following baseball leagues. Now, in the state of Minnesota, American Legion, the Senior Legion, the Junior Legion, they're all in their regional playoff games uh, here this weekend. And I think the state tournament is next weekend. So they're going to be done here in the next uh, 10 days, roughly, uh, with, with baseball, or the majority of the teams will be done. Now, in town ball baseball, town team amateur, there's really 10 days left of the regular season, if that nine or 10 days left. And so there's a couple of games on the amateur teams schedules. Also some makeup games where they got rained out earlier in the season, but they've got the next nine or 10 days to wrap up their season, uh, make up their makeup games, play their games because the playoffs are here. Uh, regions will be here in about a 10, 12, two week period. We'll be in the middle of regions. And then, um, the next couple of weeks of that and the teams will be going on to the state tournament. So this will come fast and furious. Now we'll be covering uh, that again uh, on my midweek show. It's more of that town town ball wrapping up town ball Wednesdays on YouTube. Now I got an album of the week. Yes. 
You were out camping, traveling around. What were you enjoying by the campfire? Doing a little camping this last week. I, I did a, a special on my midweek uh, midweek show on the Tomahawk East League town ball team down south, south southern Minnesota. And I uh, was down in Springfield, made a couple posts today after visiting their uh, city of Springfield Historical Museum. Went through that on Saturday morning and got some good, good articles, uh, good, good photos of some old time. They got a history team that goes back to, you know, 1902, I believe, there in that in that town playing town ball. This is so that goes very, very far, far back. But here's what I was listening to on the Walkman this week. Now, 1902 was Coach Mike back there with that team then? No, no, this is this precedes. Precedes Coach Mike. Why a little bit? That's awesome. So the album of the week is God Smack this week. The, the album is called Awake. God Smack Awake is the album of the week. I'll bring it up here. Awake is the second studio album by rock band God Smack. Released on Halloween the year 2000, it features the song Going Down, which first appeared on the band's first studio recording, All Wound Up. And this was also the only Godsmack album to feature drummer Tommy Stewart. Now, dur during the 2000s, the songs Sick of Life and Awake were used heavily in, for the United States Navy's Accelerate Your Life recruiting advertisements. I may have, may have seen those, uh, the U.S. Army's ads uh, heavily featured the Godsmack songs in this era uh, in, the, in the 2000s in their advertising campaign. The band opted to convert a warehouse in Haverhill, Massachusetts into a makeshift studio rather than use a more traditional studio setting. According to lead singer Sully Erna, the band did not want to move into any luxurious studio because they wanted to keep an edge for writing and not get too far away from what they're all about. So they just stayed in the slums rather than moving into luxury. The band the, uh, they have more tougher sound. Uh, uh, Erna says the results show the music's tougher sound. However, it's a very raw edge to it. It's not very polished, he says, but it still has a lot of good grooves and a lot of power. Awake debuted at number five on the Billboard 200, selling 256,000 copies in its first week. And the album would go on to sell at least 2 million copies in the United States alone. Overall, Sold 2.5 million albums, went double platinum. Never got to that triple platinum status, but this this album sold a lot of uh, sold a lot of records since its release. The album's title track dominated radio, rock radio, and broke the charts through out 2000 and 2001. The album's spoken word track on the song "Vampires" earned the band its first Grammy nomination in 2001. Awake when the Boston Music Award for Album of the Year. They're a, they're a Boston band. Godsmack's a Boston band. And uh, so they won that. Greed, another song, earned the band the Boston Music Awards nomination for video uh, single and video of the year. Here's the track listing. Song one, Sick of Life. Song two, Awake. Song three, Greed. Song four, Bad Magic. Song five, Going Down. Song six, Mistakes. Song seven is Trippin'. Song eight is Forgive Me. Song nine is an uh, instrumental called Vampires. It, uh, this song includes the dialogue, contains dialogue from the television show Mysterious Forces Beyond. Song 10 is an instrumental called The Journey. Song 11 is Spiral. Now there's a couple, if you, if you find some import albums, the Japanese bonus tracks on this album uh, they do a cover of Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath cover Sweet Leaf. They also do on the Japanese version of this. They do, a, they do Sweet Leaf. Uh, here's the personnel. Vocals is Sully Erna. Lead guitar is Tony Rombola. Robbie Merrill on bass. And like I said uh, previously, the drums were done by Tommy Stewart. And so the uh, total album length, 45 minutes, 29 seconds. Some good stuff, heavy. Got some raw, raw edge to this. And once again, they, they used a bunch of this in the, in the Navy ads of the U.S. Navy. Some very heavy uh, music uh, in this as well. Here's the 
singles released. June of 2000 was the single Awake. Song two is Bad Magic, released in February 22 of 2001. Then they released the song Greed, May 22nd of 2001. And then Sick of Life, August 9th of 2001. And so this, this sold a lot, very good. Once again, it was released on Halloween of the year 2000. It's also under the genre of new metal, NU, new metal, and alternative metal. But I like it, one of a favorite of mine uh, when I got into the Godsmack uh, mode for those fans out there. We uh, sure like this one. Went two and a half times platinum officially. Two and a half. I like the fact that you don't see it on albums much anymore. They had not one but two instrumentals. Yeah, and usually they have one, but uh, they did two this time, and they used the spoken word of that of the television series. They got into a lot of uh, audio for video games as well, mm -hmm. drawing in that that genre of television series, movies, and then also helped tie in that U.S. Army for new recruits. The big fans of this music. Uh, was was 16, 17 year old kids. And so drawing them in uh, to when they turn 18 and, and, and enlist. So uh, I think it was very successful uh, that way. So that's the album of the week. All right. I know um, we had some stuff come up here. We got, they like said, Tom Ball and Legion Ball, that fun stuff is ending. Um, camps are opening up soon for the NFL, I think. They've had the drafts so are going to start. They're uh, non required camps like rookies or Guys were having injuries probably showing up. Um, I haven't heard too much local wise on the local football team, any big shakeups, new players, players injured or anything like that. Um, like I said, went to the Saints game Thursday night. My, my first time there in seven years. First time I've been down there. I saw your photo. Yes. Me and uh, it was Irish night there. Um, being – British. It was a little goofy being there at Irish night, but good times were ahead. I was with, I can't remember what the sheep's name was, but I was there to have my Barry or something like that was kind of a parody name they had for him there. Um, good time was ahead though. It's a nice, beautiful stadium. Beautiful stadium at CHS. I love it. I, I definitely am planning on going back there again. Um, for the first seven, okay, Andy, why it's your first time there in seven years? Really? Never had the time. Um, family stuff always came up, this, that, the other thing. Um, the scheduling didn't work out. Uh, this came up. I, I love the six games against one team for the minor leagues that they're doing this year. You like it? I kind of, I kind of dig it. I watch the standings and the, watch the games on TV and follow it. And that, you know, I, I kind of dig it. You get to, if you want to promote the AAA more on TV, don't give me spots here and there. I need to get my fingers into them and understand all the players. Um, since there's not a lot of media coverage for the AAA, let me catch all the games and make my own media coverage. You know, you can see all the players in a six game span. Three days set, you might not see everybody play. Um, I know when we were there Thursday, because it was the end of the uh, All Star break. Like I said, uh, Cove played, uh, Garver played, and uh, Ostios played. Um, so pretty sure none of those guys were done. I think he's probably just done there getting extra at bats over the All Star break because I don't know if any injury or he was rehabbing, probably just get some extra swings in. Um, and I don't know how his contract works with him to be called up and down all the time, how that works. Now, if a player can just do that, hey, we have a day off. I want to play on the AAA team. Okay. <laughs> you know, um, but Garber says rehabbing an injury, he looks good. And if Cove, like I said earlier, is having problems with his back, take the year off. Don't mess with your back. It's not like it's like a broken finger that's not healing right. You can just tape up and go through or something like that. This is your back, man. You know, I mean, I guess just because I was reading the other day a uh, story about John Castino, former twin who had issues with his back also he had issues with, I think. So just great career, rookie of the year, had promising career, back issues done. So just don't take the chance. It's not worth it. Take the year off, get healthy. Because if we are going to rebuild, 
do a little dump and rebuild. We need a guy like him healthy next year, not fighting through back issues so we could finish 20 games below 500 or 10 games below 500, not be 100% at spring training. I want him 100% at spring training. So take the year off, Mr. Cove. Now, I think that, that his contract is also up. So he might be wanting to get back just to, just to beef up some stats. Yeah, that could be too. To make himself right. more uh, – what his agent may have said, you may want to get back in there because – If you know he's got that back injury, you're going to take a chance on him? Yeah, that's – his know. stock is, is down. Right now, so. or, or do you trade for him now and go, we traded for you, stay home, and we'll see you in March. It's for training. You know, get healthy. Just take it easy. Um, for local people here in Minnesota-wise, it's, it's taking time. Justin Morneau for Twins games is getting better and better as an announcer. I like him. He was a little flat that first year, but he's getting more relaxed and comfortable with it. So he's kind of he, – he's not dumb booger humor like Burt Blylevin was, but he's, he's fun, he's relaxed, and he doesn't talk to you like – in big baseball terminology, like um, John Gruden used to all the time when he did football, you know, instead of saying, Oh, here's a pass play to the left. Gruden always had to say, Oh, they ran the double Oklahoma sweep to the, you know, no, it was a run to the left. You know, Morneau keeps it simple. Does give you a little terminology words, but keeps it simple. You know, um, I heard one game today. He said, uh, what was the line? He is so like guys. Sometimes when you're doing bad, Larry Walker taught him those. The only stat I'm worried about is after my next at bat, that would be one for one. Because he goes, there's too many guys that are worried about, we lost four to two. What was my line score? You know, so it, it's hard to stay focused when you're doing bad at the Twins are now. And that's what he's trying to get at. It's like, just worry about yourself and go one for one all the time. That's all you can do. Short memory. Yeah. Yeah. So little things like that, he had plugs into the game. And so, like, yeah, a lot of little, little educational kid tidbits yeah you know I mean, he doesn't name drop like i mean yeah he said larry walker but he doesn't name drop all the time like well you know when tim mccarver was bad for that in the 90s tim mccarver would always make sure you could see his world series ring that's my world series ring that i got for doing nothing you know but yeah the twins are doing they're doing okay i mean i said they're not doing well in standings but i just like things are the pitching is what the issue is Kenta Maeda is just not what he was last year. Um, none of the pitchers, except for Barrios, are doing anything, you know. So was was it lightning in the bottle last year? Is this year just a, if they're all having a bad year? Is it still lightning in the bottle? I don't know, but <laughs> they're all doing bad this year. So I say hold on to the pitchers unless you get a sweet deal for someone for a Buxton trade or a Nelson Cruz trade or something like that. But I would be careful trading pitchers. Uh, Barrios, maybe, because if he's be the shiny apple on a bad team, he might ask for more money than we're, we're, we are willing to put out. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get interesting. But uh, now we're in the playoff hunt. The All-Star game is over. The final playoff push. Sellers, buyers, trades, deadline coming up uh, two weeks. So things will get interesting, I think. So. Yeah. You're going to see a lot of trades coming up. Um, and trades are like, why did you get that guy? Well, when you look at it for, for a contender, say the Giants, why did they get another first baseman? Well, sometimes you can't have too many left-handed batters, or maybe he's really good for it with a glove when you want him in the late, late innings or something like that. So don't think – I'm pretty sure the Padres won't pick up a shortstop. They got Tatis Jr. They're not going to pick up a third baseman. They got Machado. But if you pick up a guy – like Chris Bryant, well, he still plays the outfield. Bryant could play second base if needed be. So that wouldn't be a bad pickup in San Diego. Um, one other thing I do want to say that I heard from last night at the Nationals-Padres game, if you get a chance to catch the audio from it, the game was canceled or suspended in seventh inning because we're shooting right outside the stadium. Oh. Machado and Tatis and all the other players, like – Kind of, it kind of reminded me of the earthquake in Oakland before the World Series. Yeah. When everybody went for their families. But Tatis, they went up got people and said, here's the clubhouse, come on down. You know, because he didn't care who you were or what you were. 
they're shooting out there. You get down here, you know. So hats off to the players. I think they handled it well. They didn't freak out like, I'm a billion-dollar player out of my way and save me. Neither one of them took that attitude. So I was kind of respectful right there. I thought that was kind of there. Tatis Jr., I'm just loving him more and more every week. I'm seeing some of the stuff he's saying and doing. He's having fun. He's good. He's not, he's not a chip-on-his-shoulder guy, you know. Um, but I just hope he has a good career and keeps that up, you know. That's what I'm afraid of. A guy who does well like this and when he has bad, he's still going to have that good personality. That's – I mean, I hope he does good all the way through. Don't get me wrong. But in seven years and when he starts getting old like the rest of us, it slows down. He still is fun, you know. So we'll see. We will see. Um, a couple other names on trades. Uh, you know, or the All-Star game. The All-Star game kind of takes away a little bit now because of cable. You get to see all the teams all the time anyway. But like the guy for the Pirates, you don't get to see Pirate games very often. So you can see their stud player. You don't get to see a lot of Diamondback games very often now because they're not doing well. You don't get to see their stud player. So it still has a point on that. Eduardo Escobar went one for one, former twin. Yep. The Diamondbacks. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah our current team I, re- I remember as a kid wanting to watch that All-Star game because we never got to see these other teams, these other players. And that's the right. game you sat down and watched because you can get to, to see all the uh, all the stars from all the teams. Well, like for us here, we got to see all the National League players because there's no yeah. interleague play then. So you got to see the National League guys and not just the guys you saw from the game of the week, you know. So it, it's still kind of fun to watch in a way. You get to see some of the other players. And the thing about the baseball all-star game compared to the rest, they don't play defense in the Pro Bowl. NHL all-star game, NBA all-star game, don't play defense. They play defense in baseball. They may not always crash into the wall. They may not go diving too hard, but they do because it's just a reaction in baseball. That's what you do. The ball's to your left, you dive for it. Do they ole it every now and then? Maybe. But you know they're legging out that base hit. And in baseball, it's not for the bonus. It's not for the bragging rights to get home field advantage. They tried that crap for a while. It's bragging rights with the buddies is what it is in baseball. I really think it is. That As much as people won't admit it, these guys are real tight in baseball more than any other sport you think of. They probably talk so much crap with each other back and forth in the offseason, how they beat them in the all-star game or their interleague game plays. I so there's a lot of pride at stake in the All-Star game, I think. All right, well, that's all I've got for this week's episode. Uh, we'll get this out there and uh, look for Andy's midweek show on mine, too. Yes, thank you, guys. We'll see you later. See ya.